Hey guys, I just got back from Duluth for a couple days and I got a package waiting for me here. So I'm excited for that. I'm gonna open that up in a second. Um, if you remember any of the older John B videos, he opens unboxings in kind of a goofy way over the top way. So I'm gonna kind of replicate that little homage to John B. And if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Chris, Chris Fish and Fitness. I make fishing and fitness videos. I'm hoping this video is gonna get some traction because I'm doing a video on a Shimano SLX unboxing, DC, SLX DC unboxing, and my first impressions on the water, which will be tomorrow. And as far as I know, there hasn't been many done yet on YouTube because it's pretty new reel. So I'll let you guys know what I think of it. I'm gonna set it up right now after I unbox it and tomorrow I'll be out on the water. So. I also thought about doing something to kind of blow up my channel a little bit. It's been a couple months and I haven't really got much traction. It's hard to grow this stuff. I know there's so much fishing stuff out on YouTube right now, but I thought it would be a good way to kind of kickstart my channel a little bit. And I came up with, I'm going to give away a Shimano SLX DC reel if this video gets over 5,000 views and I'm at 1,000 subscribers. So. Both of those have to be met. If those are both met, I will go through the comments section and I will pick, I will scroll up and down on the comments a bunch of times with my eyes closed and then I'll land on one. And whoever I comment on will get a new Shimano SLX DC reel sent to them on my dime. You just have to comment what gear ratio you would want and what your favorite species of fish for is. So on to the unboxing. I got everything I need for the unboxing here. I got a nail clippers to get to cut the excess line that I'm putting on. I'm gonna put 12 pound test suffix elite on here. Mono actually uh, usually fish braid on most of my reels, but I only have one or two right now that are mono on them. And for some instances, I prefer mono, so I'm gonna go with mono on this one. I got a beer here, shoots Black Butte Border, one of my favorites. And I got the rod that it's gonna go on. This reel is going to replace my Daiwa Acceler. Uh, it's just a Fenwick HMX rod I've had for like 10 years. So this thing is pretty damn old, but I really like the rod and I don't see any reason that I have to buy a new one, even though I'd really like to get the SLX rod to pair with this reel, but oh well. So, so what I'm going to be unboxing with SOG Axe. Kind of like a throwing axe, maybe. I don't know. Get that back in focus. It's got some dirt on it from throwing it at my target, but there we go. Watch me break the damn reel before I even get it. All right, this axe is quite sharp. So. Inside this box, we got some protection in case any idiot tries to open it with an axe. Yeah, box is a little dented here. And inside, we got a Shimano SLX DC. Looks to be all right. No axe damage on it, so am I getting this into shot? Who knows? Figure it out later. So, holy crap, this thing is freaking light. My God. So, I really don't have much to compare this to. I don't have the regular SLX, but it's a little, from what I understand, it's a little bit wider than the other SLX. Got the DC chip in there, which must not weigh very much because this thing is super light. So, this is the real model SLX DC 150 XG from Shimano. Three different uh, gear ratios. And then it comes with a little real oil bottle here so there's three different gear ratios for this thing and i'm not exactly sure what those are i'm gonna look them up right now give me a second all right so looking it up on shimano's website the, the slx dc 150 just the regular version has 6.3 to 1 gear ratio 26 inches per retrieve per crank the SLX DC 150 HG has a 7.2 to 1 gear ratio and 30 inches per crank. And then the SLX DC 150 XG has an 8.2 to 1 
and 35 inches per crank. So I got the XG, I believe, right? Yep, 8.2. I got that faster gear ratio because I'm usually fishing on a stand-up paddleboard and I like to be able to pick up line quickly, especially because like a two mile an hour wind will kind of push the paddleboard kind of quick. So as soon as I cast it out there, I want to take up slack pretty quick. So that's why I wanted the higher gear ratio. Um, all three of them have, oh, wait a minute here. 11 pounds of max drag for the XG and the HG and 12 pounds for the regular. So the regular 6.3 to one has an extra pound on the max drag, which probably doesn't make much of a difference, but four plus one bearings, doesn't have a lot of bearings, but I've heard it's really smooth and ball bearings really aren't the end all be all. And it's 7.6 ounces. So this thing's pretty damn light. So if you want to enter that giveaway, once I get to if, if and once I get to a thousand subscribers, and 5,000 views on this video. Comment your favorite species to target and which gear ratio you would prefer. And I will scroll through once those two criteria are met, I will scroll through and pick a winner. So now I'm gonna put this on my rod and put some line on it and set it up. All right, so I got the line winded on here now off my little spooling station. Gonna fill this up and I want it to wait until tomorrow on the water to take the first cast with it, but I don't want to wait anymore. So I'm gonna cast it out in the driveway here. I'm probably gonna put just a weedless frog or something on it just to cast it and see how the thing casts. I've got pretty high expectations, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so here's the brake settings. Number one, for maximum distance in calm conditions. Number two, for braided and monofilament lines in any condition. Number three, fluorocarbon lines in any condition. And number four, extreme windy conditions, beginners and skipping. So let's go test that out. All right, so I was gonna do it in the front yard, but the neighbors are out and they're gonna be funny looks. So I'm gonna adjust the spool tension knob here until the lure barely falls, which is about right there. We got it on setting one, which is max distance. And let's see how far this thing casts. This is a compact frog by Lunker Hunt. Not an easy lure to cast. My good lord, it freaking bombed it though. Holy cow. And I'm stuck on some tree. Great. Weedless lure really works great. I'm just gonna pause this while I go on on stick my lure from that tree. So guys, long cat long distance casting isn't quite always what it's cracked up to be. Um my other top end combo, which is not really top end, it's more of like a mid top end, is a Tatula SV. And that thing casts pretty damn far and a from some of my old reels that didn't cast as good, you're not used to that new distance. You will catch trees a lot if you're not careful. So just keep that in mind. Let's try another one here. I'm not gonna put my thumb down. I, I don't know, I don't remember if I put my thumb down on that last one or not, but I'm gonna not put my thumb down on this one and see what happens. Slight, slight overrun in the line there, but not really too bad. And I'm gonna catch that damn bush again. Yep, and and I'm stuck again. I gotta go get it. All right, guys, setting two. And I think that's on two, right? Yep. And honestly, on setting one, I was not really putting that much force into it. And that thing sailed way farther than I thought it was. So let's see how setting two is. Um, again, I'm not gonna thumb it. I'm just gonna cast. was a slight over run but it came out and my frog is free so I can just reel it straight in that's awesome all right let's try one more I'm really gonna try to hold the reel up here ah that was right into a pine tree all right I'm really gonna try to hold the reel here and show you if there's any overruns There's no overruns, but there's probably a foot or so of line that's not wound on there super tightly. So I, I would say you don't have to 
thumb it, but it definitely doesn't hurt to thumb it. Maybe if I have the spool tension knob slightly tighter, it would be better too. There, the spool tension knob is not falling. Let's try that. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. So I tightened up the spool tension knob a little bit and now there's absolutely no overrun. Again, zero overrun there. And that whistling sound is so awesome. All right, now let's see what happens when I put it on three. This is, this says for fluoro, but I have mono on here. So let's see what happens. Not much. Probably about the same, but I'm gonna stick it back on mono after I try setting four once. So setting four, it says for beginners, for skipping, or for windy conditions. And yeah, that puts a lot more brake on it. Casting distance is definitely cut down. So I'm gonna revisit setting one one more time now that the spool tension knob is good. Good Lord. I'm gonna catch that freaking tree. Oh, yeah, there, all right. All right, this is just fun. I'm gonna take a few more casts off camera and then I'm gonna go in and put my lure on and get ready for fishing tomorrow morning. All right, guys, I'm out on the water now on the stand-up paddleboard. Got the dial set to one. It's not windy at all, so it should be fine. And it launches it. <laughs> So I'm casting a Sabio Cooley minnow. I'm pretty sure this thing is like three quarters of an ounce, so it's a pretty heavy lure. I would definitely expect it to cast pretty well. There's a fish. Not a very big one. But it is a bass. Handled it pretty well. Gears seem good. If you guys have used the Corrado K, that thing has the micro module gears. I don't think the SLX DC has micro module gears. So the micro module gears just feel so solid. And this one doesn't quite feel as solid as that, but it still feels pretty good. Fish again. Feels decent. Drags handling good. Probably just a little northern, but we'll see. Oh no, it's a nice bass. Sweet. Oh my God, there's a bigger one following it. This is actually a nice fish. Look at that guy. <laughs> Doesn't want to be held. There was another one bigger than this one following it. 
I've never seen largemouth do that. I've only seen smallmouth do that. Right in the fin there, buddy. You're good. All right, guys. First decent fish on the SLX DC. He's probably about 16 or 17. Messed up fin on top. Jeez, he's had a rough life, it looks like. See you later, buddy. Wind just picked up a little bit here. So I got the setting on two, which is mono or braid. One is for the best casting distance, remember, in calm conditions. And I, I've lost a couple feet, but it hasn't been too bad. Oh, there's a fish. Uh, a little northern this time. My players out. And let's get this guy off. Always fun taking little northerns off of treble hook baits. Shaking hooks by your hand. There you go, buddy. Alright, I think I'm going to take this Sabeel Cooley minnow off here and Switch to something that's a little bit more weedless. So I got this chatterbait here. The Moxie trailer chartreuse skirt. That's what's going to go on next. There's a fish. Another bass. Hey, buddy. Little guy. On the chatterbait with the moxie. There's a fish again. Looks like another pretty good one. Let's get up here. Buried in the damn weeds. Get out of there. Come on. Wow. Taking a pile in here with me. Oh, it's another nice bass. I think at least. I can barely tell how big it is. Because all the weeds on it, but get in here, bud. Oh, it just popped off. Nice fish. Nothing too special, but Come on, get, is it on there still? Yes. <laughs> and this one's in order. And he's in the weeds. At least I got him on a chatterbait this time. So there will be no treble hooks. And he took my moxie. Oh no, there it is. Open up. There you go.
Oh, tiny guy hit it right at the board. Jeez, see you later, buddy. Sorry about that. Of course, I wasn't going to put that cast in the video because I let go of my thumb during the cast for a second and I casted like 10 feet. But since I got a fish, it's probably going to go in the video now. He swallowed it, kind of, didn't you? Where is it? You can't tell where it is. There we go. Just slightly threaded through your gill. Get it out of there without doing any damage. There we go. Thought he was a little bigger than that when he hit both sides, but, or board side, I should say. Not very big, but good numbers at least. Holy cow. Alright, buddy. See you later. That's a better one. <clears throat> Man, this thing's got some strength. It's not that huge. <clears throat> My bud. They're nice bass. Still nothing too big. Definitely have not broke the 18 inch mark yet. Kind of got the wind coming at me here and it's not real bad. It's like four, three or four miles an hour probably. So I'm gonna put it on one. I'm gonna cast directly into the wind and see if I can backlash it. No, not even close. Here's another fish. Get out of the weeds. That's a good bass. Bunch of weeds on there. All right, guys, so I'm going to wrap this video up here of the SLX DC review. Uh, this, I really like this reel. It's been a great reel today. Uh, I think I caught like 20 bass, only four or five that were good size, but a couple small northerns. So it held up well. It feels slightly chintzy and plasticky compared to like my Tatula SV or even the regular Corrado K, which I think is probably the two reels you would consider buying instead of this one below the $200 price point. So uh, I think it will hold up well as long as you're not dropping it on the concrete on your way into the garage or banging it around in the boat too much or whatever. So 
it feels like it'll hold up good. The gears feel good. The drag is solid. Everything feels pretty good on it. Time will tell. I'd like to do another review after like three months and what I think of it. But the casting distance is great. If you have a heavier lure, I had it on the first setting pretty much the whole time, even casting it in the wind. Lighter lure, you might have to go, or something that catches the wind, you might have to go to a two if you're in the wind. But I really don't see a use for the four unless you're skipping, and unless there's 20 mile an hour winds or something crazy like that and you're casting right into them but um, I hope you like this video please consider subscribing if you liked it I want to get a lot of more entertaining content and educational content this coming fall when the fish are really putting the feed bag on and if I get a thousand subscribers by September 1st 2019 and this video has over 5,000 views. I'll be randomly selecting a commenter to give away an SLX DC to. So that's a $190 reel you could get for free just by subscribing to Chris Fish and Fitness and commenting on this video, telling me which gear ratio you would want and your favorite species to target. So if I hit those numbers, I'll be buying one of the commenters a, D a SLX DC. And if you're interested in my stand-up paddleboard setup, which I was fishing on today, I will leave a video showing this in the description below so you can watch my other video. I think it's called my stand-up paddleboard setup or something. But it's a really slick way to fish, and I think if you guys want a cheaper way to get around on the lake without, without doing bank fishing or without spending a bunch of money on a boat, this is the way to do it. So I'll link that in. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today and subscribe, share with your friends and see if you can win that SLX DC reel I will hopefully be giving away. I had a feeling I would do this. I went to runnings after this review video and got the Shimano SLX rod for the SLX reel. Just pairs together so nicely and this rod is a lot lighter than that HMX. So it is a medium action, extra fast Shimano SLX 7 foot 2 inch rod. Looks really nice with that SLX reel. Blue, black, thing just looks sweet. Hopefully I can really put this thing to the test soon and catch some big bass on it. For now I tied on this goofy looking Bomber A. Right, Bomber 2.4A or 24A or something, I don't know. Cool color pattern, we'll see how that thing works out. So this guy's gonna go over here. Oops. And on the HMX that I just had that on, I put the Daiwa Acceler back on there and I just put kind of an old spinner bait on there. So I'm gonna just throw this in the truck when I'm fishing and hopefully I see some kid at a landing or something that wants a new rod and reel and I can just give it to him. Last year I had a kid that when I came up to the landing on the paddleboard, he looked at my gear and he said to me, nice bay casters, all excited. So it's kind of funny. And I'd really like to just be able to go to the truck and be like, oh yeah, here you go, here's one for you. So I don't have much use for that anymore. Um, I've kind of upgraded a lot of my equipment over the last couple of years. So I'd like to give it to someone that needs it. Um, if you're interested in what kind of gear I have to compare the SLX to, I'll just quickly go through some of my more expensive higher end reels. I got an Okuma Helios SX spinning reel. I got a Daiwa, what is this, Saltist Back Bay reel. I got a Quantum Vapor bait caster. Daiwa Coastal, Daiwa Tatula, Shimano Tranks 200, Luz Mock Crush, this is the SLX, this is the Corrado K, this is another Tatula SV, and this one is a regular Tatula. I don't think it's a CT Type R, I think it's just a regular Tatula, a couple of years old. So that's kind of what I'm comparing the SLX to. And as far as the $200 price point, the main competition I think is probably that Tranks 200, Corrado K, and Tatula SV. And the SLX DC is right there with all of them. It's probably one of the best ones out of them. 
see how it holds up. I think the Tranks and the Tattoo Last V feel a little more solid, but especially for a beginner, someone that's not great at casting bait casters or for casting light lures, the SLX DC is definitely something I would look into getting if you have the money for it. 200 bucks is kind of getting up there, but if you fish a lot, I definitely think it's worth it and you'll be happy with your purchase. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.